Do you ever have those situations where Excel does things that you just don't expect? Well, today we're looking at five of Excel's dirty little secrets. The things it does that catches us out and causes us to calculate the wrong numbers. Maybe one of these five is causing your workbook to calculate the wrong numbers right now and you don't even realize it. So if you're ready, let's get started. For our first example, we have a column of lookup values and a column of return values. All we want to do is to look up the value 1.3 and return the corresponding letter, which should be the letter D. In F4, I'll type equals X lookup, opening bracket. For the lookup value, we want the value in E4. For the lookup array, we're going to look up in the range B4 to B13. Then for the return array, we want the values from C4 to C13. When we close that function and calculate, it now returns the hash NA error. It can't find 1.3, but it's clearly there. So let's go and check whether the value in E4 is equal to the value in B7. When we calculate that, it shows true. So the value in E4 is equal to the value in B7, but our X lookup can't find that same value. So what's going on? Well, if we were to look in the background at the code for our Excel workbook, we would see that the value in cell E4 is 1.3, but the value in B7 is not exactly 1.3. It has a three as the 17th significant digit. Now, most functions in Excel calculate to 15 significant digits. That includes checking whether values equal each other. So when we checked whether E4 was equal to B7, that's true to 15 significant digits but it's not true for lookup functions that use 17 significant digits. So why doesn't cell B7 equal exactly 1.3? Well, cell B4 equals one, but cell B5 is the value above plus 0.1. And when we copy that down, it builds up a very small rounding difference. And as a result, we can't get the value of exactly 1.3. Instead, we need to wrap our formula in the round function, and let's round that to one decimal place. And now when we copy that down, our lookup value works. So just be aware that anytime you perform a lookup on a decimal number, it might not be able to find that number, and therefore it could return the wrong result, which means we need to use the round function to ensure that we always look up to the correct values. For our second example, we have our cells in a tabular layout. We have an item column and a value column. The calculation in cell C12 is equals sum of C4 to C11. Now, what happens if we insert a row below the data, but above the total? When we look at the range, it still references C4 to C11. Here's the thing. If we add a number into cell C12 and we press control and enter to commit that value, nothing changes. However, if we enter a value into C12 and we commit that value by pressing return, suddenly our sum in C13 changes. Our range has increased. It's now C4 to C12. So Excel changed this range all by itself. Now, I don't know whether this is a useful feature or not, but the good news is that we can control it. So if we go to the file ribbon, and then options. In the advanced section, there is an option called extend data range formats and formulas. So if you don't like this treatment, you can uncheck that option, or if you do, you can check that option. In this example, we have a column of area codes and a column of zones, and then the values that relate to those areas and zones. All we want to do is to look up the area A1 and zone one. So this is a classic multi-value lookup scenario. For this, we're going to use equals X lookup opening bracket. We want to look up F4 and we want to look up G4. The lookup array is from the range B4 to B19 and also from C4 to C19. Then the return array is from the range D4 to D19 which means that the area of A1 and the zone of one should return the value of 71. 
However, when we close this and calculate, it returns the value of 61. Why isn't it calculating the correct value? Well, the truth is that Excel isn't looking up two values. It's combining F4 and G4 into a single value. Therefore, it's looking up the value A11. It's then combining the range B4 to B19 and C4 to C19 into single values. And the first value which matches A11 is the first row. Therefore, Excel has returned 61. With a lookup function, there's no such thing as a multi-value lookup. Therefore, if we want to perform a multi-value lookup, we need to use spacer characters to represent the different columns. Let's edit our formula, and then let's add a hyphen in double quotes. That hyphen is a spacer character, which means we are looking up A1-1. Let's do the same for our lookup array. We need to add a hyphen into there. And now when we calculate, it returns the correct result, which means any time you want to do a multi-value lookup inside Excel, make sure you include a spacer character because there is a risk. It might be a small risk, but still it is a risk that you could end up looking up the wrong value. In this example, we have two workbooks and we want to look up the value from another workbook. So in cell C4, I'm going to use equals X lookup, open in bracket. The value that we want to look up is the value in B4. Then for our lookup array, we're going to look up in cells B4 to B11 of our external lookup workbook. Then the return array is going to be the range C4 to C11 from that same workbook. When we close that and calculate, it looks up the correct value and returns the value of 52. If we change our lookup value from alpha to Charlie, everything works. If we change it to delta, everything continues to work. Now, what happens if we close our workbook and then rename the workbook that we are looking up to? Let's go into that workbook and change some of those values. Let's make alpha 152, Bravo can be 145, Charlie can be 123, and delta can be 116. Let's now save that workbook and close it. Now, what happens when we go back to our original workbook? It has a link to a workbook that no longer exists. So what should happen if we change our lookup value from delta to alpha? Well, we would expect that Excel wouldn't return a value, but it does. It looks up the value from alpha and returns the previous value. Let's change our lookup value again from alpha to Charlie. Once again, it returns the old value. How on earth is Excel performing a lookup on a value that no longer exists? And also more worryingly, it returns the value which is now the incorrect value. How does this work? Well, let's go to our Excel workbook and we are going to rename it with a .zip extension. This will change it into a zip file. We now want to drill into that zip file and then the Excel folder and then the external links folder. In there, there is a file called external link one Dot XML. When we open up that, we can see all of the values which were previously included in our workbook. So Excel has kept a secret cache of all of those previous values and therefore it can continue to calculate correctly. The only time that we know that we're looking up to a workbook that no longer exists is when we reopen our workbook and it asks us if we want to update external links. At that point, when we click update, Excel will tell us that it can't find all of those linked values. For our final example, we have an item and a price, and we want to calculate what the final price is once the discount has been taken off. So we might decide that we want to create a named range. I'll select cell C3, and let's call this range discount. That means we can use the name discount instead of referencing the cell C3. Okay, let's now use this in our calculation. In cell D6, I'll type equals C6, which is the price, and I want to multiply that by opening bracket one minus the discount. As I start to type the word discount, it appears in the IntelliSense as a named item. I'll close that and calculate, and now we can copy down that formula into the rows below. So far, we haven't got any issues, but what if we decide to duplicate our worksheet? 
So I'll hold control, I'll drag that worksheet, and that now creates a copy of that worksheet. Let's head back to our original worksheet and change the discount to 50%. All of our final prices update. However, if we look in our copied worksheet, none of those prices have changed, even though they were based on that named range. If we go to formulas and then the name manager, you can see that we now have two named items called discount. One of them has workbook scope and the other one is scoped to the worksheet. If we edit our formula and try to re-enter our named range of discount, you can see that we now have a workbook scope and a worksheet scoped named range. That means that if we create a workbook level named range, anytime that we copy the worksheet that contains that named range, it will create a new locally scoped version of that named range. And therefore, it may mean that our formulas won't update correctly. We need to go into those worksheets and update all of those formulas to point to the correct named range. And that's it, that's five Excel features that don't behave as we might expect and can cause us to calculate the wrong numbers. Have you got any others? Let me know in the comments below. And then once you've done that, I think this video is going to be right up your street. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.